Hello everybody and welcome back to Creation Myths. Today we're going to cover some bad creationist genetics in which Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson flubs phylogenetics. To review a little bit, Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson is a Harvard-trained PhD in cell and developmental biology. He's a young earth creationist who works for Answers in Genesis, and he recently, as of this recording in the summer of 2022, put out a book called Traced on the history of humanity as told through the Y chromosome and how that history lines up with AIG's version of the young earth creationist timeline. Something that you hear all the time from Dr. Nathaniel Jeanson is along the lines of, well, if I'm so wrong, why does my model keep making accurate testable predictions? For example, these clips are from my conversation with Dr. Jeanson on June 2nd of 2022. Take a listen. And the fact that my predictions are working is the counter argument. So which methodology accurately recapitulates the hockey stick shape of human population growth? That's what this paper does. This makes predictions about the rate at which we should find new branches that are already working since this paper came out. It works like crazy. Why do other implications that flow from my model see such dramatic success and continue to see dramatic success? You do experiments, which is what I've been doing for the past several years, and they keep working. And that to me is my main challenge to my evolutionary colleagues is please explain why these predictions keep getting fulfilled if what I'm doing is fundamentally wrong you're denying that there's a match that's staring you in the face. That is, an, that is a quantifiable 95% match where I've employed my methods, my assumptions, and it works and it predicts things in the future. Yes, that was the point of this paper from 2019, and we've seen it continue to work. We've got data right here as one example, where there's a tremendous match and it continues to work. What he's referring to here is this paper, testing the predictions of the young Earth Y chromosome molecular clock, population growth curves confirm the recent origin of human Y chromosome differences. And I'm not gonna go through all of the nuts and bolts right here, but I wanna point out just one thing with his methodology that he's basing his predictions on. And it's this little piece right here where he's talking about population growth inferences from rooted Y chromosome phylogenetic trees. So evolutionary trees of the human Y chromosome that have a root that indicates the most recent common ancestor of all extant Y chromosomes at some point in the past. He writes, simply counting the accumulation of Y chromosome branches over time would reflect changes in ancestral human population size. I applied this suggestion to the design of my population size inference methods. In other words, He's saying that the number of branches on a rooted Y chromosome phylogeny is a proxy for the population size, and the rate of increase in the number of branches is a proxy for the population growth rate. You can correlate those two things together, make testable predictions about one, and then test them using the other data set. That's what Jensen is saying you can do here. So he calls this in a figure in a couple places in this paper, he calls this his branch counting method. And I'm gonna go through exactly what he's doing here so it's crystal clear. So what we're looking at right here is a simple phylogenetic tree. Over here, we have the root, that's in the past. So over here is the past. And then as we go forward towards the present, this end is the present, we have divergence. We have an increasing number of branches as you move from past to present. So what Dr. Jeanson does is he says, well, we can correlate this with population size. So let's put a y-axis for population on our time axis right here and put data points for each of the branches on this tree. So here, at this point in time, we have a single branch. At this point in time on our phylogeny, we have two branches. Here we have four, and here at the end, we have eight. So we have these data points indicating the number of branches on the tree. And what we can do is draw a curve that shows how they increase over time. And what Dr. Jeanson says is this curve approximates population growth. He actually directly correlates the two in several figures in that paper that I just showed you. So here is one such figure. We have two Y axes here in blue. We have number of Y chromosome lineages. That's the number of branches on the phylogeny. And on the right side over here, we have global population size. So in blue, we have these curves that are the Y chromosome branches. In black, we have these 
uh, these curves right here that have been smoothed, and that's fine. That are the human population size going back about 3,000 years. And what he says here is he lines up these two curves and says, look, this is a 95% match. And he says this over and over again. I get a 95% match. The data are staring you in the face. I get a 95% match. This is what he's doing. He's correlating the number of branches and how those numbers of branches increase over time with the increase in population over that same amount of time. That's his branch count method. So let's be very clear about one thing here right off the bat. Dr. Jensen is wrong when he does this. You can't do this. All right, so let's talk about why he's wrong. Either he understands how coalescence works and doesn't care, or he doesn't understand how coalescence works. It's one of those two things because he's completely misinterpreting his Y chromosome phylogenies, and we're going to talk about why. The short version is that the number of branches on a phylogenetic tree does not approximate the population that that tree is modeling, okay? Specifically, Dr. Jensen says that you can correlate the exponential population growth in human populations in recent human history with the exponential growth in branches on his rooted Y chromosome phylogeny. The problem here is that exponential population growth phylogenetically displays as longer branches, not more branches, and this is extremely basic. Here is an example of this from a 2004 paper where we have, uh, this paper was talking about how a bunch of different parameters affect the topology, the shape of your phylogeny. And if you look in the red box right here, you have a population of constant size, which shows this exponentially increasing branch pattern. And here we have an exponentially growing population that doesn't show more branches. It shows longer branches. That's a little bit small. Here's a bigger and simpler figure from a 2013 paper showing the same thing. Here we have exponential growth. You see the branches are longer. Here we have constant population size. That's where you see your increasing number of branches as time passes. So what about Jensen's predictions? How are they looking? Well, Jensen's rooted phylogenies look like this, right? They look like this, where you have an exponentially increasing number of branches. But human population growth looks like this, right? The recent history of human population growth, as Jensen says, looks like a hockey stick. It's an exponentially increasing curve. Do they match? Do Jensen's predictions of population based on his phylogeny match what the population growth actually looks like? Nope. If you have a phylogeny like this, the population growth that's implied is this, constant population size, zero population growth. Jensen says this phylogeny implies this population growth. That's completely wrong. And I want to emphasize just how basic this is. We're not just like making this up, right? Biologists have tested this. We can model real populations and correlate the real populations to the math that we use to generate our phylogenies. So we know that when we generate a phylogeny that looks like this or that looks like this, we're accurately representing that population growth. And this is also why when you're doing phylogenetics for real, which is a whole other complaint about what Dr. Jensen does, he uses a method called neighbor joining, which is amateurish. You don't do that when you're doing this for real. But when you do this for real, one of the important parameters in your phylogenetics model is your population growth model. Is your population constant? Is it exponential? That's going to have major implications for the shape of your tree. Dr. Jensen just ignores all of this. He says that I have a phylogeny that looks like this. It predicts population growth like this. Ta-da, it matches when that's just not the case. Like, it doesn't match at all. His predictions are wrong. So when he says, why are my predictions always right? The answer is, they're not. You're doing phylogenetics wrong at an extremely basic level. So what's Dr. Jensen's response to this? Well, have a listen. You literally quote a textbook to show that I can't use this method when the science is staring you in the face. I, I realize it disagrees with how the methods are typically done in the textbooks, but science is supposed to be finding chinks in the established armor and then testing these new ideas, which is what this is exactly doing. If that's what Dr. Jensen genuinely thinks, that he's uncovered an error, that the entire field has missed, that he has a better way of doing this, then he knows what to do. Because remember, he has a legitimate PhD. He's got legitimate credentials. He knows how the peer review process and the scientific method works. He knows how you overturn a consensus. So what he needs to do is write it up, 
put it up for peer review, and show that he's correct. Here's a testable prediction for you. He won't do that. Ever. Because I think he knows that he's actually wrong. And he's not playing for a scientific audience, and he's not actually trying to overturn the consensus. I think he's just making his presentations and writing his books for a young Earth audience in order to reassure them. So in the summary, Dr. Nathaniel Jensen has presented the correlation between the number of branches on his rooted Y-chromosome phylogenies and recent human population growth as evidence of accurate young Earth predictions and confirmation of his, and therefore AIG's, young Earth model. He makes basic errors interpreting his phylogenies, either disregarding the fact that exponentially growing populations exhibit longer branches rather than more of them, or he doesn't realize that this is the case. For my money, I think he knows that there's a problem here and he's ignoring it. He could submit his model for peer review to demonstrate that his work is serious and correct, but he won't do that. Thank you for watching. Don't get fooled.